In the last episode, we were able to work on authentication by making use of Clark. And in this episode, I want us to create our socket server. And we have a guide on socket.io. I'll leave a link at the description section below to it, but you can also type it out uh, right here. You can follow this link. And basically, socket.io server can share the same underlying HTTP server with Next.js. And uh, it is easy to create this server because we already have all the code that we need to get started. The first thing that we need to do is to create this server.js file at the root of the application. So I'll come at the root, I'll add a file and I'll say server.js. And then I'll just copy this code and I'll copy, I'll paste it here and I'll try to explain what is going on. Now, one thing uh, with creating the server this way is that you want to be able to deploy your application to Vercel as it does not support WebSocket connections. But don't worry, once we complete the application, I'll show you how we will deploy our application in a different platform for free. Once I copy this code, I come to my app here and let's see what is going on. So basically, we will create a Socket.io server that will share the same HTTP server with our Next.js application. And we are making use of three things to create this server. We are making use of Node, Next.js, and Socket.io. So you need to have Socket.io installed. Let's install it. I'll copy that one. Then I'll add a terminal. And once I add a terminal, I'll say npm i Socket.io. I install it. So once we dive into the code, we will start at try 9. And basically what we are doing at try 9 is to create an XJS application. We create the app and then we come right here, we prepare the app and uh, once it's ready, we will be able to run this function in here. In this particular function, we are creating a HTTP server and we are making use of Node.js. This create server comes from Node. So we create a HTTP server by making use of Node.js, but we are also passing it something else here. And this is the handler that is coming from our Next.js application. So basically, we are creating a HTTP server by making use of Node.js and our Next.js app. And then right here, we are able to create our Socket.io server by making use of this HTTP server. We pass it to our server here and this server is coming from Socket.io. Now that we have this I.O., which is our server, we will be able to listen to events from the client, like the connection event like this. And also we will be able to use it to fire events to the client. Now, how do we get to run our server and together with our application? So we need to change the script. I'll come right here and I'll go to package.json file. This is where we will have the different scripts for running our application. And as you can see right here, we were using dev, next dev. So we'll change this. What we will do, we will run this command now, node. Then right here, we run our file, which is server.js. So this is the new way that we will be able to run our application. From the documentation, that is exactly what they recommend. You remove this, then you add this. Also here we remove start, next start, we add this start, we check if you are on production and we run node server.js. So you can just copy that one and you replace it with this particular start. So one thing that we need to do is that this server.js, our server is making use of this import statement and this is um, the ES6 syntax. And uh, if we try to run our application with uh, not server.js, you'll notice that it draws an error. Let's just do that and you'll see npm run dev. So once we do that, it will run this particular script and run our server.js. And uh, for now, I think we should get an error uh, because of the imports. So here, you'll see syntax error, cannot use import statement outside a module. So we need to tell our application that uh, it should use the import statement even on our server. And we will do that at our package.json file. So what we need to do, we just need to come here and we'll add a type. We will say type and right here we'll say the type is module. Initially, it was using common.js by default and that's why it was complaining. So I save. And once I do that now, we should be able to run our application.
So here, I run npm run dev again and see what happens. And uh, it's ready now on localhost 3000. Let's visit that link right here. It will load, it will compile our code and I will give it some seconds for it to complete. As you can see now, our application still runs. And if we happen to log something to the console right here, so let's see if it gets logged, console.rock to make sure that this file is running. So let's say running and we save. Now, one problem that we will face while working with this server is that it does not auto refresh. So it, it is not automatically running this server.js file whenever we make a change to it. Although when we make a change to the client, the client will still auto reload because of Next.js, but this server, it's our socket IO server and it doesn't. So what we can do is to make use of nodmon. So what we can do is to stop the server and run this command npm i, then use minus capital D, then say no daemon or nodmon and hit enter. <laughs> nodmon. No daemon sounds crazy. And uh, uh, we can write our own script. So we can write our own script which we'll be using. You can still use this one, but let's write our own here. I'll duplicate it and I'll say nodmon. And right here, I'll say we will now run nodmon and then server.js. So we run this particular command. So what we will do now is right here, instead of saying npm run dev, I can say npm run nodmon and it will still run our application. So save this file. And then let's see if we see this particular console log by saying here npm run nodmon and hit enter so let's see if our app still runs and you can see our, our application is running and you can see right here running that is this particular console log now the good thing with nodemon is that it's reasoning to any changes so right here if i happen to add something and we save it will take the change and it will automatically rerun our server and we still see running here with the change so that is a good thing and now our app is still running if we refresh we should see everything is still working so very nice so this is how you can create your uh, socket server it's super easy and the next thing that i want us to do is to listen to this connection on the client and then we'll be able to log something to the console whenever someone connects okay so i'll see you on the next one